Good morning everyone. Today I want to talk about the Tekken 7 Season 2 ranking system. This is a little bit of a controversial topic, which is why I kind of waited for this long to talk about it. I don't enjoy elitism in gaming and I certainly never want to talk down to people on this channel. It's kind of the opposite of what I'm trying to do with it. But it is true that we're playing a very competitive game. Some people are more advanced and some people are less advanced. And there needs to be some sort of system in place to indicate that for the game to remain competitively interesting. Now, as anybody will tell you, online rank is not a perfect reflection of skill at the game, but it's sort of all we have and what we're left with, which is, is why it tends to matter a lot to a lot of people. So the first thing I did in preparing for making this video is I asked my viewers what they think about this, and I asked them if they prefer the Season 1 or Season 2 system. And as you can tell, after uh, 2,000 or so votes, uh, more than two-thirds of the people who voted prefer the Season 2 system. And if we're going to think a little bit about why that might be, and this is obviously conjecture, but if you read comments and you ask people, it seems to be the case that more advanced players tend to prefer Season 1, whereas newer players tend to prefer Season 2. Obviously not true for everybody, but I do think it's a trend uh, that exists. And if you are a long-time Tekken player and you played a lot in Season 1, you got certain ranks and certain achievements back then, they can sort of feel a little bit cheapened uh, by the fact that it is now a lot easier to get to those same points. Uh, conversely, of course, if you're a new player and you're playing this extremely difficult game in this very punishing Season 1 system, uh, it's now easier for you to feel a sense of progression earning those new promotions, which is a lot uh, of fun, of course. It's always great to get a new promotion. And so you can sort of see both sides of the argument. I'm going to tell you what I think about this, but the first thing I want to do is explain a bit about how the system actually works. And to do that, I'm going to use this very useful image. I think it's provided by somebody called Tagmaster88. You can see the name up there on the left, which is funny, by the way, because I think that was the guy who was trolling uh, Thor in Endgame. But the way this image works is if you look at Brawler up there, which is the lowest rank that is included in this image, you need 3,000 points to promote when you're at Brawler. And if you look on the right, you can see how many points you will earn or lose if you play against somebody who is at your rank or one to three ranks above or one to three ranks uh, below you. And this is sort of the central issue that we need to get to. It is something I'm going to refer to as the pity point system because you can see that winning against somebody, if you're playing against somebody you're at your own rank, will earn you 200 points more than you would lose if uh, you lost against the same player. And so what people were worried about and what started happening is you would sort, sort of be organically pushed through the system without necessarily having to maintain a high win rate. And so if you need 3000 points to promote and you're earning uh, you know, 200 points more for winning than you would for losing, uh, then you would have to win, what, like 15 times to earn a promotion and you wouldn't necessarily have to win more than other brawlers to get to Marauder. And so that would start pushing people through the system and, and cause players to pool at higher ranks. And I think that certainly has happened to an extent. If you look uh, at the higher ranks, you will uh, see that the system, the pity point system becomes less pronounced the more advanced you go, and once you get to Fujin, it disappears completely and the game will no longer give you any bonuses or any help. You also need 8,000 points to go from Fujin to Raijin as opposed to the 3,000 of Brawler, so I'm actually kind of thankful that there is a point where that system disappears completely because it can feel a little bit condescending that the game is holding your hand and giving you these little handout points, in my opinion, along the way. Uh, one thing I want to talk about here is if you look at uh, like old videos and forum posts, a term that you run into a lot is green rank hell. And what that refers to is this uh, feeling a lot of people had that uh, the green ranks were kind of like a big concrete wall that you slammed into as a new player. It was kind of a, a fire that you had to walk through as a Tekken player and being able to promote out of them and consistently stay out of uh, the green ranks was kind of this achievement that you uh, had as a new Tekken player. And that uh, doesn't really exist anymore to the same extent in my opinion because like you can see, the system will sort of push you through it a little bit and help you and you're sort of spread out and the low rank hell is probably spread out and diluted over a larger number of ranks at this point. Uh, however, 
I do want to really, really emphasize here that if you are a new player and say, for example, that you got your first brawler promotion this week, you should definitely be so very proud of that. And I do really congratulate you. You should not let it uh, deflate you and, and cheapen your achievements uh, when people are saying that the ranks are inflated in Season 2. I think you should be really, really proud because this is mainly, I think, a system you should use to compare yourself to yourself and uh, an indication of your own progress and less of a system that you use to compare yourself to other people because that can only really demotivate you. There's always somebody out there who's going to be better no matter how high you go and you are still playing one of the most difficult video games in the entire world. It's always going to be hard to learn new things and to progress. And so definitely um, feel proud and, and uh, don't be demotivated if people are talking about your rank as being very low. This is just me trying to give you like an honest opinion on what the ranked environment looks like uh, you know, in Season 2. Now a question I get a lot is like, what is an advanced rank in this system? And it's very difficult for me to say. In an early season two, uh, sorry, an early season one video, I said that I think Vanquisher used to be that sort of uh, point where people tended to get really advanced and where the level of Tekken tended to get really high. And I don't think that's necessarily true anymore, but I also don't have a clear answer for where that breaking off point is now because the ranks are a lot more vague and a lot more diluted. And I also tend to not play uh, at those low ranks um, at all anymore, and so it's difficult for me to tell, you know, what level of Tekken is being played at each level. I kind of have to, you know, go online and watch like videos and streams to get a sense of that. Um, so I don't have a clear answer for that, but I will say that the first rank that I consider to be completely undeniable, and again, I need to be clear, it's not the first rank that I consider to be like really high or really advanced, that's probably a lot lower, but the first rank that I consider to be completely undeniable in this system is Raijin. And the reason I say that, it's the first promotion you can earn after getting to Fujin, where the system is no longer doing you any favors. There are no pity points, there are no bonuses, and there is no help whatsoever. And so that's why I think uh, Raijin is like uh, a rank where you can really feel like you've stood completely on your own two legs. And the only reason you got to Raijin is that you were consistently better uh, than everybody who were uh, at Fujin. However, I will also say that even though the ranks have been a bit inflated in the new system, you're still playing in the same system as everybody else. And so no matter what rank you have, you are still achieving something that people who are lower than that have not achieved yet. And so you should still be uh, proud and you should still feel a sense of progression when you earn promotions, no matter what level they're at. And I still think that like Genbu and the red ranks and Mighty Ruler and the purple ranks are really high and there's a, an extremely high level of Tekken being played at those ranks, the community has uh, really consistently impressed me with the high level that is being played you know, at any skill level at this point. Uh, Tekken 7 is really cool that way. Uh, I was talking to Tanakana at EVO Japan in February um, and something that she said that I thought was interesting because I've said the same thing in, in some of my earlier videos is that while fighting games are certainly an issue of skill and trying to improve at doing something difficult, there are almost more an issue of playing something for a really long time. You know, the most advanced players tend to be the people who have played for the longest. Um, and if that's true, and if that's the case, then the most valuable currency you have, you know, your most valuable asset is really your motivation and your will to go forward. And to be able to maintain that, you need to play the game uh, with a sense of enjoyment and you need to be relaxed. And so I don't think it's useful to worry too much about whether or not your rank is considered really high. Um, and you should probably spend that energy, you know, in practice mode, trying to land that difficult thing that you've been dropping a lot lately. And progression will sort of happen organically as long as you don't give up. Of course it is the case that you can be smart about the way you are practicing and that will allow you to progress a lot quicker. But not giving up is really the central issue, especially when you're playing something as difficult as Tekken. Because yes, you are developing skills, but it is also so difficult and it is constantly pushing you know, the limits of your reaction time that you need to turn some of those skill in, skills into actual instinct, you know, and second nature. And that takes uh, a lot of time to do. So I just want to give you a big kudos and really congratulate you on your latest promotion. And I really do believe, and I'm not bullshitting here at all, 
well that you can get uh, as high as you want as long as you're able to stay motivated and, and able to play the game with a sense of um, enjoyment. I really do think that's important. I'm not just saying that, but I know you probably have your own opinions on this. Overall, my conclusion on like the second uh, on the season two system is that I think it's good. I would personally prefer if that pity point system fell off a lot earlier. Maybe you know it doesn't exist anymore after Gembu, and that would uh, sort of cheapen the red and the purple ranks a little bit less. Because um, I don't like to feel like the game is being condescending towards me. But I will also definitely acknowledge the fact that Tekken 7 uh, in Season 1 was very punishing and ranking up in Tekken is very very difficult. It's always going to be difficult because of how hard the game is, because of how many legacy players who um, exist, you know, how many experts exist. Uh, so while I would modify it, I still think it's an, uh, uh, a somewhat useful indication of, of progression, and I think it's an okay system. I don't know if I want if I would want to revert back. Uh, that's a different question, but there are two really important things that I think we need to uh, appreciate about Season 2. The first one is the progress bar, that's huge, it's very, very useful, um, and I love that, and we should have had that from the beginning, but I definitely think it needs to, to stay. And another good thing I think about Season 2 is the fact that if you were a higher-ranked player in Season 1, you would sometimes have to wait a really long time to be able to get a game, but now that people are spread out more across the ranks. You can actually get diverse competition even at higher ranks, play against a lot of different people uh, and you don't have to wait as long and I think that's really important because you know you're kind of wasting a lot of the time you're just spending in the lobby. Uh, but overall while I would modify Season 2 and its ranking system and why I don't think it's perfect, I think it's okay and I don't have a huge problem with it but definitely let me know what you think. Uh, thank you so much uh, for watching this video. Uh, stay happy, relaxed, and motivated, and I'll see you guys again uh, very soon. Bye-bye for now.